In this video, we're going to solve problem 2.3.12s about finding the present value of an arithmetically increasing monthly annuity based on a nominal rate that's convertible quarterly is the little wrinkle in it. It's going to be a little easier problem than what we've done recently, so that's good. Um, and I do want to continue focusing on using formulas, even though you can sort of program your calculator to do much, much of what I'm going to show you. In the last video, we did have uh, the investors being Danny and Sandy, who I guess were from Greece. And in this video, we have the investor being Olga, who I guess is from Norway. Here we go. Olga buys a five-year increasing annuity for X, so that X is the price she pays. That's the present value. She's going to receive two at the end of the first month, four at the end of the second month, and for each month thereafter, the payment increases by two. So it would be 6 at time 3, 8 at time 4, 10 at time 5, etc. The nominal interest rate is 9%, but it's convertible quarterly, not monthly. Calculate X, the present value of this annuity. So here's our timeline. Let's mark off the months. 0, 1, 2, 3. Of course, a quarter of a year is 3 months. The interest of 9% is convertible quarterly. We are going for five years, so that would be 60 months. A payment of two at time one, a payment of four at time two, etc. We keep going up by two, which would make the last payment at month 60 be 120. We want to calculate X, the present value of this annuity, at time zero. Symbolically speaking, we can pretty easily write down what X is. It would be 2 times the standard present value of an increasing annuity based on how many payments? It would be 60 payments. We don't quite know the monthly interest rate yet, the effective monthly rate. Let's just call that J. We're going to have to solve for J before we evaluate this quantity. Um, again, this is the present value of an increasing annuity with 60 payments with, in this case, J is the interest per payment period. Let's go ahead and uh, use the formulas that we've developed recently to rewrite this before we go ahead and evaluate it. This IA sub 60 is that present value that's going to be A60 with the same interest rate, double dot, that's a, the present value of a level annuity due, minus N times V to the N, N is 60, so we get 60 times V to the 60th, all divided by J, this monthly, this effective monthly interest rate. And let's go ahead and write in what a double dot is. That would be um, 1 minus v to the 60th divided by d, where d is the monthly effective monthly discount rate. So here is ultimately the formula that we're going to use if we're going to do this in a formula-based approach, which is what I'm doing. All right, what else do we know? We know, again, this nominal interest rate is 9%. Symbolically, we would represent that by I4 because it's convertible quarterly. I4 is 0 0.09, which means the effective quarterly rate would be that number divided by 4. I4 divided by 4, 0 0.09 divided by 4 is 0 0.0225. And if J is the effective monthly rate, what we're going to get is that 1 plus J quantity cubed will equal 1 plus this thing will equal 1.0225. So J is going to be the cube root of 1.0225 minus 1. Let's go ahead and calculate that. We will be using our calculator quite a bit here. So the, the hardest part about this problem is just the calculator usage. The problem solving aspect of it is not too bad. 1.0225, third root of that, raise it to the one third power. I'll just type 0.3333333. And then subtract one from that. J is about 0 0.007. It looks like it's a four repeating. I'm sure it's not. This is going to be an irrational number, I'm sure. But it's approximately that, and that'll be good enough. I think I will go ahead and store the value of J in register 0. Store 0. And let me make a little note to myself that it's stored in register 0, because we're going to use like four of the registers here. So that's what J is. 
Um, from that, we can figure out V. V is going to be 1 over 1 plus J. V is going to be the monthly discount factor. So go back, add 1 to this again, take its reciprocal right there. V is about 0.9926. I'll go ahead and write it down, but I will also store it in a register 1. So that's stored in register 1. I'm going to need to figure out V to the 60th, and I need to use V to the 60th a couple times. I think I'm going to store the value V to the 60th. In the end, I'm just going to use the calculator. But let's see, let's find V to the 60th. Raise this to the 60th power. There it is. Let's store that in register 2. V to the 60th is about 0 0.64081647. Right there, that's going to be stored in register 2. And the last thing I'm going to store in a register is going to be the value of D. D is going to be J over 1 plus J. So again, J is in register 0. Recall 0. And divide by 1 plus that number. Oops, get rid of one of those four. So probably doesn't matter. Okay. D is about 0 0.00738943. I'll store that in register 3. All right. So now I'd like to finish the problem by going back up to this formula and essentially just use it with the calculator as is and write down the answer in the end. That x will equal all right, so track with me. You might want to pause every once in a while. Again, I could use, probably use built-in calculator um, financial functions, but I'm trying to do a formula-based approach here. So let's go ahead and find first uh, 60 times v to the 60th. Maybe I'll store that in register 4. v to the 60th is in register 2. So recall 2 times 60. I'll store that in register 4. I won't bother writing a 4 down. That's this thing here. Let's calculate this next. So we do V to the 60th again, which is in register 2. Recall 2. Subtract that, uh, subtract that from 1. Divide by D, which is in register 3. Call 3. This fraction up here is about 48.6077. Now subtract this, which was in register 4, minus recall 4. The top of the fraction is about 10.1587. Now divide by j, which is in register 0. You get this number, now multiply by 2. The final answer, which is correct here, is about 27.29. Point two one. Okay, and that is a correct final answer. So take a look over it. Problem solving wise, it's not too bad, but uh, at least if you use the calculator in, a, in the way I did, it was kind of complicated to keep track of everything. Um, but definitely a good little problem to, to work on for the actuarial exam.